You've probably seen a base similar to this before. Usually inside one of these things, you're gonna find an open area with a lift and probably a battery. However, these bases are meant to be protecting one of the most valuable resources in Rust, your car. You see, a car allows you to recycle safely, travel quickly, and can even be a mobile raid station. But I have two major problems with these bases. The first is that they take up so many resources for so little functionality. And the second, arguably bigger issue is that they completely fail at the one job that they have, protecting your car. You see, in most cases, people are gonna think that it's worth blowing down a wall or even a garage door in order to get that car. I'd be among them. So with that in mind, I've designed a car base that would make it impossible to actually steal your car and could also function as a main base featuring a hidden loot room that no raider will ever find. Now, while at first glance from the outside, this might look like your typical car base, once you open up the doors and get inside, you see that it's just about anything but. Coming inside here, we're gonna make our way over to the right side, starting off, and we've obviously got a garage door to close this off. This actually functions for a couple reasons because it makes it a lot harder for someone to actually take over your car. You see, they need to access this control panel to actually rekey and take your car. And without that, they won't be able to do so. Not only that, but from the outside, there's no easy way to take the car. In fact, destroying any of these walls will require that they destroy multiple walls just to get that car out. And you actually can't get the car going through the doors. If you went through the doors, you wouldn't be able to push the car. You wouldn't be able to get around the car and you would actually have to destroy the car to go any further. As a player though, I can easily hop in and start moving around. Of course, with that smart switch closing things behind me and simply switching seats to move around to different sides. Coming over to the right side here, we've got a standard loot room featuring drop and regular storage. And on the left of that, we've got our furnace room, electric room, and our TC all in one tight corner. Now coming over to the left side, we have our workbench, plenty of room for a couple bags, and the rest of our storage. And that's about it. However, there's actually a lot more to this base than meets the eye. To look a little deeper, let's first get the car out of the way and come on back inside. And this is where the base really shines. While it does just look like a standard car base with nothing really to it, they can't steal the car. And not only that, even if they break into every single one of these rooms, they'll miss your most valuable loot. That's because this base has another secret. Down in the pit. That's right, below our car lift is where we store our most valuable loot. Something we can only grab, we can only see, and nobody else can touch. Between hidden protected loot and a car that can't be stolen, this base is gonna change your wipe. When you are building a car base, you wanna be near a road. So find yourself a nice stretch of road and a somewhat flat piece of land. It doesn't have to be perfect like the water here, but something flat. And then we're just gonna back away enough that we can expand later if we want to. This is gonna mean that while this is where we're gonna start from, we want a few squares of expansion option for later. Next, we're gonna place a temporary square and seven triangles. I know some people really hate this, but honestly, it really shines in this base. Next, we're gonna place this and grab your tool, whatever you have available, and destroy all of these. Early in the game, a crossbow works brilliantly as it does destroy it in a single shot. Place your two squares back and when you get to this third one, we're going to place it very carefully by moving to the left. And as soon as it snaps, we're going to place that. Then come back and destroy these as you did with the previous one. Again, you are going to need a tool as you don't have ATC down yet. At this point, you can go ahead and upgrade this and you might be able to tell, but it is a little difficult with the foundation to tell. So we are just gonna place two walls like so, which give us a lot more of a clear view of what's going on. Once you have these two walls placed, we can actually go ahead and upgrade those. 
and then place some raised foundations around now this is why we did want to do the as low as possible to the ground it gives us that room to place this and then we're gonna close it in just like so next we're gonna place a low foundation right here and here and that's just gonna be required in order to keep going we can place this here and then a raised foundation will go in between and over on this side once you have that done we can actually go ahead and straight away cover that because that's mostly just to allow us the ability to actually do this bunker you see we need these raised walls to actually clip onto and so what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully place one floor at a time. First, this one here. And then before you place the second floor, you are going to need your boxes. So at this point, if you're not ready to go ahead and seal this, you might want to get your TC slapped down, which you're just going to put into right here. And I do recommend placing it as far back as possible. And then of course you can place just a standard door if you would prefer. But I like to stick with the window method as it does provide that cheap extra security early on. If we were to surround this quickly, we would just simply go around like so, closing everything in. And you can actually just put that wall like that for now. It is important to note that you are going to want to fill in that back piece of honeycomb pretty early on. Because if someone does soft side this, they can't actually get into your base. With that closed off and hopefully a front door, let's get some boxes down here. Now, a couple things of note is first off, you're going to want to make sure that you lock these boxes. If you don't lock the boxes, it will actually be possible for someone else to loot them. And that can be a little problematic. So we're going to actually squeeze a third small box in here, lock these up and then jump up here and very carefully again, you want to make sure you place this roof piece or this ceiling tile connected to this wall the same way that this one connected to that wall this one has to connect to this wall so don't let it clip to this side piece to do that you're going to want to kind of look to the left and kind of bring it in this way that way you know it is clipping to the right piece and you might not be able to check no unfortunately can't but as soon as you upgrade it, you should be able to come along this line. And if you're using a crosshair, you should see that lovely open sign. Now it can be a little difficult to sometimes get them and you might need either a crosshair or a weapon that gives you a crosshair. But with that, you should be able to very patiently find all of those boxes. Now, once you've located that, closing in the rest of this is very easy. We're just gonna go ahead and place a large wall going like so blows up here give ourselves a nice little shelving area here and doing the same thing on both this side and this side now you may have recalled in my tour i did use a triangle shelf here because you do have a furnace room here you don't have to but in order to get the triangle shelf, you do just have to come outside, create that nice little raised area. And then coming back inside, we can very easily snap that. Go ahead and close this off. And the same over here. Now the electrical for this base is very simple. You will need to, however, get yourself a solar panel. Thankfully, for only 75 scrap from outposts, you too can harvest the power of the sun. Keeping in mind that the sun will always rise in the east and set in the west, usually traveling across the northern sky. So I like to face my solar panels facing northeast generally, or at least north-northeast. Obviously right now that's not going to do too well for me. And depending how late into the wipe, it might need to be moved because the sun does move on the island. But let's jump back inside of the base. 
and place down our small battery. Now, I really do like to just shove my small battery in here because it won't take up any extra space. And then we can very easily go and connect that to our solar panel. Now, the electricity for this base is not overly complicated and it's actually not really needed except for the lift. But what you're gonna wanna find yourself is a smart switch and an e-branch. We're gonna grab the power out from this, connect it to the e-branch. The power out from this is gonna connect to the smart switch. And then we're gonna take this branch out and set it to five. Now is the time where we want a car lift. I do recommend having your door frames put in first. Uh, this is gonna help make sure that nothing is interfering. But then we can go ahead and slap this down. Now, for ease of movement, it is a lot easier if you take it all the way to the right side here. You also want to kind of try to make sure that you place it roughly in the middle. And you should have no issues placing a door. Now, for a base like this, garage doors are going to be a lot easier, but double doors will work everywhere except for this back door. Now, we can go ahead and grab this power, run this along, and hook it up to the lift. And you should see a green light. This means we're good to go and we can start working on vehicles. But more importantly, it acts as a distraction point. It gives people even more reason to never look here. And because these are locked, it's something that only we can access even if they did know it was down there. And wiring your automatic door is pretty much just as easy. Placing down a door controller with your door closed, running that wire to the smart switch, and then pairing it to your smartphone. Obviously not required, but it'll make your life a lot easier. And if you do expand out adding more garage doors, simply connect the pass through to the next door controller and it'll open as well. Obviously we fill this out with boxes and place all our deployables, but this is pretty much the base. Now, if you do find yourself wanting to add that extra layer of security, maybe a little bit of honeycomb, doing so is really not a problem at all. The issue that you might find in doing so is that you might make yourself more of a target because you've expanded. But at the very least, it is very useful to add that extra garage door and especially adding a ramp. Now, one thing I'd keep in mind is your ramp should really never be upgraded beyond wood because that's going to make it a lot easier for you to expand out later if you decide to. That said, I like to come over here. I'm going to upgrade this. I'm going to wrap around some extra honeycombing here. And then on this side, I like to do something a little different. So we're going to start with a low foundation like that. Raise some honeycomb like that. And we're going to place a square over here. Now at this point, I can close this off. And of course, upgrade my honeycomb as I normally would. But we're going to destroy this piece down here. Once that's destroyed, we can place a half height wall right here. And we're going to slap a couple door frames. Now, some of you might realize what I'm doing already and some of you might not, but it is a very helpful little addition to add, especially for a car base. But again, completely optional, just extra utility in my opinion. On the left side here, I like to add a lovely little locker. And on the right side here, we're gonna put a refinery. Additionally, this room, which acts as honeycomb and protects the refinery, is the perfect spot for a bedroom. Slapping in a bed, a couple boxes, and a locker, we can still move through here without any issues. And we've got plenty of room up here for a couple of quick drop items. In my mind, this is a great way to take advantage of some actual utility honeycombing while actually giving you some extra protection to your base. If you are going to go that route, it is very useful to add a pancake layer as you are already increasing the size and cost of your base. Now, with that said, personally, I would stick with something like this. Living out of a much smaller base tends to put people off and make them not really target you. Not only that, due to the small size, when someone does raid this, they're going to come with less boom than they actually need. This can cause them to not be able to actually fully get through your base. But most of all, 
they're more than likely to miss the most valuable loot. Protecting your car and your raid supplies, this little base does a pretty good job. And that's it. If you guys like this video, if you guys like this base design, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, have a good wipe and peace out.